Oh, while I am escaping with the tea. G'day, I'm ET and welcome to the show. Well, this week we're out fishing wide of Queensland. Myro's hooked up to a beauty and I'm with Greg from Wicked Fishing. Check out all the action. The Queensland Reds are on the charge and I tackle a thumper. Oh, oh yeah, baby! A change of pace, chasing Aussie oh, bass. Beautiful Australian bass. Oh, wow. And a close-up encounter with my old mates, the sharks. Look at that shark there. Somewhere east of a city famous for its rum, it's a perfect day aboard the Quintrex Trident hardtop, oh. and the action starts early. Well, today we're out wide of Bundaberg, and we're... <laughs> this is the first drop. And fingers crossed, it'll be a first nice redfish. We're after redfish today. I'm out with Greg from Wicked Fishing and I've got my mate Myro here as well. We've just dropped down some uh, beautiful pilchard and uh, squid baits. And uh, I hooked up straight away, basically. Had a bit of a free spool and just let it uh, take it down before just lifting the rod and striking two really sharp gamakatsu hooks. Got a bit of color down there, it's nothing too uh, Extravagant at the moment, but it's a start and first fish to the boat. And the first fish, all right, a little mother-in-law fish, eh? Yep. Not exactly what we're after, but a beautiful looking fish. Oh, settle down, fella. Here we go, the big blubbery mouth of a slaty brim. And they call them the mother-in-law fish. They're not that much uh, good to eat, are they, mate? No, terrible eating. Mother-in-law fish, they're commonly called. <laughs> <laughs> Give them to your mother-in-law. Give them to no, the mother-in-law, no. that's about it. <laughs> Next, it's Greg's turn. Well done, soft plastic man. <laughs> See what happens. It's always good to hook them on the soft plastic. Absolutely. Something different. Light line. What's it feel like? I'd probably guess a, a cod at this stage. And what sort of cod do you get out here? We, we get a, a fairly good mix of mary cod, blue mary cod, uh, a lot of gold spot estuary cod, and okay. black spot cod as well. So right, fair variety of them. Wow. So what's this type? It's a particular wide netting cod. So that's a, another species of cod as well. Obviously a sucker for soft plastics, any of the cod species. That natural invitation of a bait fish being injured, and uh, they usually come out of their little hidey hole and sh grab whatever they can take. They're a good looking fish, aren't they? Beautiful. Beautiful colours. And what happens with the barotrauma here with the fish? Yeah, well obviously this fish has suffered from barotrauma quite badly. Yep. And uh, obviously their stomach comes out with the, the pressure of being brought up. And with this fish, he obviously wouldn't swim away unless we pop that swim bladder. So we'll, we'll obviously pop that swim bladder and uh, let him go and hopefully he can go back down. He's, he's obviously uh, there to live another day. Yep, good stuff. Well, we're on the beautiful 690 Trident. And have a look at the day, absolutely perfect at the moment. The conditions aren't gonna Ain't going to stay like this all day, but we're going to make the most of it right now. We're using the big Garmin units. We've got the uh, 820 up the top, and that's our sounder. Wow, some nice showings up there. And we've got our plotter down the bottom. Uh, that's the way we're using it at the moment. Two incredible units. And right now, we've got a great picture of that bottom uh, 10 to 15 metres of water, and it's really lit up. There's actually some big shapes a couple of metres up off the bottom and um, hopefully they're red. Oh, that's a bit better. A bit more weight in that one. Bit of a charge. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Made a couple of charges, not quite sure what he's gonna be. Got a bit of colour. Well, there you go, grassy sweet lip. <laughs> that's the biggest one I've ever caught. Yeah, that's an absolute cracker there. Yeah, that's probably isn't about as big as you see those fish. Beautiful eating. Yeah, Another great the... eating absolutely. fish. Absolutely. So, mate, these hang around with all the other reef species, basically? Yeah, absolutely, ET. Uh, these species are generally caught in closer, uh, even in the certain bays like Moreton Bay and obviously Harvey Bay regions. Yep. Uh, they like those little shoaly areas, but okay. you will often get them out offshore as well, in particular yeah. this area of Wider Bundaberg, the, the uh, western side of the Break Sea Spit. We get a couple as well, and they're always a good size in this area as well. There you go, Moira. What do you got, mate? Putting up a bit of a fight. What do you got, big fella? Oh, we are going through the species. What's this, a trigger fish? Yeah, that's the one. He's on. Oh, what's head shakes? 
be a mother-in-law fish. <laughs> it's not, not super big, this one. Plenty in the area. Mm. Well, they get put back all the mother-in-law fish. That's, That's the right. Thing. Quite a mother-in-law I'm going for. Nice fish. Beautiful on the soft plastic. A few different species. This one's another grassy. It is, yep. It's the smaller size. Got these beaut tonic glasses on. You've got to have really high quality polarised lenses out here and uh, yeah, these tonic sunnies. Beautiful to wear and great to see through. Gosh, that water's nice and blue today. Done well, Myro. Talk about species. Wow, look at that for a beast. He's a big beast. And one we're happy to release in the water. A little bit more substantial than any two. Very jerky. Hey? Very jerky. Very jerky, that's it. Got some colour down there. It's only a small one. Looks like another, could be a, yes, a mother-in-law. Go on, buddy. Down you go. He took a good run. Let's hope it's the right colour, eh, too. Got a bad feeling it's another slate, even. Yeah, I think it is. Another oh. big slate. Yeah, it's a shame we don't get more excited about oh, these no. guys. They're nice, yeah. nice size fish. They fight hard. Good looking fish, fight pretty hard. Don't taste that flash. <laughs> what are you calling it for? You see? Uh, hard to tell this stone. Hard to tell. Oh, he's cagey. A few head shakes there, that's a good indication though. You find the reds fight all the way to the top? Yeah, absolutely. They'll uh, tend to fight most of the way up. About midway up, they'll slub a bit, but uh, they usually put a fight in most of the way up. I don't know, I'm feeling quietly confident. <laughs> <laughs> See some colour pretty soon. Oh, oh interesting. It's here. <laughs> it could be a nanny guy. It's pretty red it's to me. Fighting like a nanny guy. So. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. baby. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. Hey, well done, <laughs> look at that big guy. Now that's a fish. All right. Some good stuff. Good stuff. Thank you. Beautiful, gosh. <laughs> I brought the biggest net in the world. <laughs> this is one of the big frabil nets. Like, we had a bit of a laugh about it before. I said, if I catch a red to fit in this net, it'll be pretty amazing. Well, that's an amazing red. That's Beautiful. good. Good stuff. Oh, no, I'm feeling For cool. refishing this good, I like a T-curve Revolution offshore rod, teamed up with a 6,000 sustain reel. 50-pound Power Pro or Finn's Braid, 80-pound trace, and soft plastics or locally caught baits, always on Gamakatsu hooks. <laughs> on the tried and hard top, out off Bundy, my mate Myro is on to something special. Oh, they're nice big head shakes. That's it. Now come back in the corner here. Beautiful. You're up on the pedestal, mate. Like a professional, look at you, hey? Brilliant. Here you going, right? Juvenile Red Emperor. Put on your champion. That is a pretty looking fish. Woo! Red Emperor time. Is that your first Red Emperor? Yes, it is. <laughs> well done, well, look at that. Thanks to the coasting ET. Oh, no, mate, yeah, look man. at that. That's a Put cracker. On the spot. And it's the start of a species yes. smorgasbord. board. Oh, look at that. Mixed bag. How's it feeling, mate? What do you got? A double header. That's pretty good. Leather jacket? I like a leather jacket, yeah. But Greg soon has us moving off towards bigger action he spotted not far away. That's the bait ball there, is it? Yeah, mate. Have a look at that. There should be everything in that. Oh, you'd hate to be a bait fish, wouldn't you? <laughs> Golly. This is every angler's dream, coming across this sort of stuff. Wow, look at the feeding frenzy there. Hardest part, that real light coloured stuff is the actual bait ball that's getting pushed to the surface by something. So you've got fish underneath, pushing them up, and then the birds gorging on all the, all the little pieces of fish that are floating in the water. Oh wow, look at them feeding on that bait. Oh, look at the shark. Wow, look at this, yeah. Oh. Unbelievable. Wow. Look at that shark there. Wow, what sort of shark is that? A very big shark. So I'm staying down and I've got a fish, yep. 
Yep, come on. Beautiful. Let's find out what's down in there amongst them. Oh, look oh, at the look sharks. At oh, look at those sharks in the middle of that. Wow. Oh, my God. Just loosen that drag a bit because he's got a bit of weight in him. It's the sort of fishing that everyone dreams about when you can get out on a nice, calm day, find bait balls like this. And we're actually out here chasing other species, but you can't go past. Oh, a big school of birds, and we've been watching huge, big long-tailed tuna rip in through the school every now and again. Whoa, I reckon that shark might be after him. I'm just going to give it a bit of a free spool, mate. And if you kind of chase after that, and we'll go, and we'll go after him, because I reckon otherwise it's just going to come back with a head. I would think so. But will our combined fishing knowledge and experience be enough right. to beat a hungry shark? Come back down there, is it? Some big long-tailed tuna has moved, moved down the coast through the summer period and uh, yeah, you can get some really big ones down here in that bottom end of Queensland. There's thousands of them up the top end, but they sort of top out around 12 kilo, but down here they can get up to nearly 30 kilo, which is just incredible. Okay. That's all we ended up with. <laughs> he's not a monster, but he's a... Uh, he's a a bodiless fish. <laughs> oh, I think that's all died down. It all was an absolute flurry. Around here, scales were just pouring through the water. There were fish getting chomped up everywhere. And now, well, I can't even hardly see a bird. It's amazing how quick, within a few minutes, it's just changed. On the Trident of Bundaberg, the after lunch session is off to a great start. Straight away, first drop, straight down, bang, straight into it. Yeehaw! Bring him up, bring him up. It's the start of our afternoon session. Uh, oh, nice cod. Maori cod, mate. Maori cod, now which way? Oh, nice it's bait fish. Up. Bring him in, he's not going back. That's a good size. Wow, nice fish, mate. Good Beautiful. stuff. Brown yeah, Mary Cod. Good looking fish, aren't they? Yeah, they're pretty, aren't they? Powerful fish. He just swallowed that hole. The afternoon session. And it just goes on getting better with a rod bending mystery package on the end of my line. I don't know what I've got. I've, I hit it about a quarter of the way up and uh, on a big piece of mullet. I think it's probably a, I don't know, probably a shark. Come snooping in, smelt the bait. And who knows? You never know what you're going to get down here. We're out here. We're going to definitely get it to the boat, whatever this is. And the mystery turns into a nice surprise. Well, there we go. Called it for a shark at one one time there. Hit me that far up the ladder. Oh, not a bad shark, eh? <laughs> he obviously followed your bait as soon as you started pulling it up. He's he must have. Chased it up and hit it. Absolutely. Whoa. He's got plenty of life left in him too. He'll, awesome. he'll release nice and easily. But not before Probably a quick right, yeah, trophy yeah. photo. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I don't know you've done this many times before. Pressure's on, mate. Pressure's on. So on a soft plastic lure? Yeah, just dropped that soft plastic down then and uh, worked it up off the bottom and dropped it back down. As soon as it got back to the bottom, it's picked it up straight away. Yep. Most of the fish I find, especially the, the tropical reef fish, they'll often take it when it hits back on the bottom. So yep. as that plastic lands back on the bottom, they'll take it. So they don't there. actually hit it on the drop? No, no, very rarely. Like a lot of your uh, predatory fish, like the amberjack, Samson, they'll hit you on the drop. Yeah. And a lot of these reef species tend to hit you uh, once you've dropped that Comes Plastic. all the way back down, back bang. The bottom. I'll pick it up off the bottom. Okay, I'm going to suck it in off the bottom. Absolutely. Tell you what, he's very active. Oh, it's a slady. <laughs> and hooked on the top of his head. Hooked sort in of the thing. head. Anyway, bring it on. Yeah. There you go. Tugger. There well, you soft go. Soft plastic caught slady brim. Down he goes. Well, we're a long way offshore. We're around 70 to 80 k's off the mainland, so when you head out that far, you've got to make sure you always carry the correct safety gear. Now, our mates at Nautilus Marine are always telling us safety comes first, and so life jackets, 
Everybody's got a life jacket here. Four life jackets on the boat, of course. We've actually got about six or, or seven life jackets to make sure we've always got enough for, for any other friends who come along. We've got uh, marine radio, very important. We've got a whole range of electronics, Garmin electronics, which really keep us safe as well. Uh, everything from our plotter and our, our GPS unit down to our sounder. But of course you need other things like fire extinguishers. You need a bucket, you need a paddle, and uh, you know, you've got to make sure you tick everything off the list before you head out, especially if you want to go and do trips like this. Exciting fishing, but you want to play it safe. Oh, it's terrible. And Corinna, backwards. That's oh. aisle. Corinna. I can't, can't get any worse. Got him? Yeah, baby. Nice big one. Don't be far away. Oh, yeah. What do we got? Oh! Well done, mate. Oh, the hell's slidey again. Well done, mate. How's that feel? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Good. Pulled a bit of line off then, so. Excellent. Hopefully, not another slidey, though. The old dirty slaty brim. We find these guys in pretty big numbers, particularly around where we catch a lot of the Red Emperor. These guys actually inhabit the same areas. And uh, you've got to take the good with the bad, and I will let this one go. Grassy. Well done. Got to hit like a train. And with the light fading fast, it's up to me to give the team a good finish to a great day out on the water. This might be a, oof, another big uh, grassy sweet lip. Very, very light colour. Yeah, he's a light colour, isn't he? Big grass. Yeah. The beautiful grassy sweet lip. Gosh, they've got incredible coloration around the eye. Another big reef predator. How's this for a complete change of pace? From offshore action out of Bundy to kayak fishing in a quiet bush creek where I'm hoping this Hobie Mirage Pro Angler 12 will get me close to some good Australian bass. Right. As you can see today, I'm up in a beautiful little freshwater creek. It's almost like a billabong here because it hasn't rained up this way for a while. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful Australian bass. What a quality fish. And just one of, uh, one of our terrific native fish on the eastern seaboard. And I threw the cicada in just underneath the branch. I saw a little ring just a few seconds early. I thought I'd just get a cast in there. As soon as it hit, whoosh. I didn't even have to rattle it. And that cicada lure, well, just resembles a cicada and there's loads of them up in the trees. They haven't started their sound yet, but uh, no doubt they'll get in full song by lunchtime. And we're up nice and early this morning to catch this brilliant l morning light. There you go, buddy. This Hobie model is the perfect platform for fishing this environment, with its hands-free pedal propulsion and the stability to make stand-up casting as easy as, well, this is definitely not falling off a log. Oh, yep, got him. Beautiful. Again, oh, this is a real little fella. <laughs> Tiny tot. Look how little he is. You're a great little predator. These hobies are built specifically for fishing. You got this uh, incredible raised chair. Now, it makes such a difference when, you, when you're on the water for hours at end. You just don't get that sore back like you do in other kayaks. And I can feel another good finish to another great day on the water coming up. Oh, there he is. Oof. Over he comes, beautiful. Well, there you go. Sometimes I surprise even myself. There were about five or six mullet that just turned over and got a bit spooked, so I cast straight into that pile and uh, just working back the, the deep diver and whack. Absolutely got cranked. And this beautiful little bass, not a monster, but it just shows you that they 
they got plenty of food here and uh, this little guy was certainly harassing those mullet. He's not a big, big fish at all. But, uh, whoop, and there he goes. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed my fishing video. If you did, make sure you like it and comment below. If you're new to this channel, subscribe and tell a friend and make sure you press the notification bell so you're notified of our next video.